All right, please introduce yourself, state your name and DOC number for the record. Robert Lucas. What's your DOC number? 10, 10 45 62. Mr. Lucas, my name is Brennan Kelsey. Along with me is Mr. Tony Maribel and Mr. Cheryl Renato will be your panel. Explain the process to you, read some information to the record, have a parole interview, ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. Do you understand the process? Yes, sir. Right. Um, and we do have uh, Elaine Lucas Slane, who will speak at the proper time, Mary Richard, Nakia Lucas Oxley, yes. who will speak at the proper time, Jessica Lucas, Kimberly Dunn, and Carrie Myers, who will speak at the appropriate time. Robert Lucas, DOC number 104562. First class offender, oh, eligibility date 12 7 2022, good time 6 12 2038, full term 7 8 2088. Uh, you are uh, 99 years since a commutation by the governor and charged second degree murder. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Good answer, Ms. Cheryl Renatza. Good morning, Mr. Lucas. Good morning. Mr. Lucas, how old are you, sir? I'm 78. 78. How long have you been in jail? 30, 33 years. 33 years. And um, the victim uh, in this case was your father? Yes, ma'am. And it's my understanding uh, it was an accidental discharge of the weapon you were carrying? Yes, ma'am. Why are you carrying a gun? And see, at that time, I was young, and where we live at, well, people, all of them was carrying guns. I was stupid. I didn't have no business carrying no gun, but I had one. That's... And then in the record, it says that the whole episode, because I, I have the record, talked about it before, of the whole exchange between brothers and father, uh, but the result of that whole episode was because of your consistent drug and alcohol abuse. That's a... Can you hear me? Oh, somebody in the new thing. Um, yeah. Go. Um, Somebody's got the phone. On. Would you agree that the crime you committed was the result of your consistent drug and alcohol use? I think so, because uh, had I not been on alcohol, I don't think that would have happened, but it it was an accident. I it understand. Wasn't, it wasn't like me or my dad trying to hurt one another. Yes, sir. So, but I want to speak about your drug and alcohol use. It seems as though you had been using alcohol for many years and drugs. Yes, ma'am. So what is your sobriety plan? How are you going to uh, stay clean and sober when you get out of jail? Because, see, I once I accepted the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in my life, I know I could take, I, I took a uh, hundred hours and uh, substance abuse and all that through, through that. But if you have God in your life, if you have God in your life, then you 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 good then. You're not going to ever do that. I would never touch drugs. Not never again. What's your um, transition plan? I see you have the parole project here. And so I assume you're going to go through some transition with them. And then what? After you that program? I can live with my sister. Where's that at? In Baton Rouge. She's already turned the paperwork in showing that she's own our own home and I can live there. Well, I do see um, there's no victim opposition. You have obvious family support who's here today uh, and you have some health issues. How is your health? As you can see, I'm in this wheelchair because I had a stroke and it put me in this wheelchair. But, uh, and I, I take medicine for diabetes, and I just went to New Orleans for my eyes. That's where I, I wear these glasses. Um, 
I suffer with glaucoma and I'm gradually going blind. I can't see out of one eye. And um, the doctor told me just on Monday, see, I went to the hospital in New Orleans Monday and they told me that uh, because of my eye I've been damaged so long, operation wouldn't do it any good. So they're not gonna have the surgery and the uh, cataract surgery, they're gonna put that off because if they have the cataract surgery and something happened to the other eye, then I won't be able to see at all. Can you, uh, are you confined to the wheelchair all the time? Yes, ma'am. All right, uh, Ward Ambo, is there anything you can add? Um, no, ma'am, he has a low tiger and he only had 27 DB reports since uh, since he's been here, and the last one being in 2025. I mean, 2000. I mean, 2015. I'm sorry. And his tiger's low, and he's minimum of C. And C. All right, we hear from Ms. Elaine Lucas Lane. Quick brief statement. <clears throat> Yes, good morning. I'm Elaine Lucas. I'm Robert Lucas' sister. I'm here in total support of my brother. He's, um, he's been forgiven by his family, friends, and, of his love, and all of his loved ones. We support him wholeheartedly. I'm here to provide a home and any type of uh, need that he has physically, emotionally, and financially. Um, Robert has shown that he has improved from being the young man that he was when he first came there. He's doing, he's done so much uh, improvement on his, on his well-being, as well as um, being a model prisoner while he's been there. And I feel that if he is paroled and when he's paroled, that he will never, ever return to prison again. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. We're here for Ms. Ruby Smith, brief statement. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, my name is Ruby Smith. Um, Robert Lucas is, is my uncle. And I just want to say that my aunt, he's family-wise, financial-wise, his, he has his family. Okay. Um, and we, we just be, love him. We just you know you support home. him. Can't hear you. Thank you. Carrie Myers, please. Yes, good morning. Carrie Myers with Louisiana Parole Project. Just to let the board know that we're here to support uh, Mr. Lucas on his transition. Uh, we're going to work with Ms. Lan uh, directly to determine what's the best course. Um, uh, it appears that the best course at this point would be us for us to to work with him uh, on a on a day to day basis, um, because it would be probably better for her, him to go straight to her home uh, rather than come to our houses in a transition. But we'll be able to provide uh, programming on a daily basis by bringing him back and forth. And so we're going to connect him to all his help him connect to all his services that he needs. Uh, we just obviously we, you can see that uh, Mr. Lucas is no threat to public safety. So we just ask this board to grant his parole today. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Lucas, would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I, I would appreciate it if y'all would give me a favorable or recommendation. Because yeah, I'm choked up. I didn't I don't want to do this, but I'm I'm, I'm old and, 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 and I'm losing my eyesight. And I, I would love to go home and be with my grandkids, and I would never commit a crime no more in life. I regret what happened, and I know better now, and I know not to get in any trouble, do anything. I appreciate it. If you would grant me a relief. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Pal Fair to vote. Yes, Renata. Mr. Lucas, my vote today is to grant your parole. You have mm -hmm. no victim family support. Uh, uh, the grant would be to the parole project transition plan, however that works, whatever that looks like. Um, yep. And I would add a special condition that um, you attend two AA meetings a week. That can be done virtually, I believe. Um, okay. So the transport would right. be initiated. And then for the first four weeks, uh, see your 
parole officer on a weekly basis. The parole project can help you with that. Good luck to you, sir. Mr. Mayor Bello. Yeah. Uh -huh. Same with the same thing. <clears throat> Thank you. And I, and Thank I vote you. to grant the parole as well for the same reason for the same reasons as stated uh, to the parole project. You'll go to NAA two times a week <clears throat> and you'll uh, report yes. to your officer weekly for the first four weeks. Three votes to grant. Your parole's been granted. Good luck to you. All right. Thank you, sir. 